much of the Yates story we already knew, uh, but there was one piece of news uh, that caught our interest. In fact, you and I were texting each other uh, during the during the hearing because uh, we sort of said, oh, well, that that is potentially new. And it was an exchange between Senator Dianne Feinstein and, and former uh, director of, of national intelligence, James Clapper. So let's take a listen to that. The Guardian has reported that Britain's intelligence service first became aware in late 2015 of suspicious interactions between Trump advisors and Russian intelligence agents. This information was passed on to U.S. intelligence agencies. Over the spring of 2016, multiple European allies passed on additional information to the United States about contacts between the Trump campaign and Russians. Is this accurate? I can't answer that. Um, General Clapper, is that accurate? Uh, Yes, it is, and it's also quite sensitive. So, Mike, what's the significance of this exchange, particularly uh, this notion that uh, British intelligence share their intelligence with the Americans. What's going on Well, here? British and multiple European agencies uh, shared the information. I, I think that it is quite significant. This is the first official confirmation we've had uh, that there were reports in the intelligence community of collusion or contacts between the Trump campaign and the Russians. Now, we don't know what the nature of those communications were. We don't know who was talking to who, but um, uh, Clapper's initial response there, uh, uh, this is quite sensitive, the specifics are quite sensitive, um, I thought was a um, a pretty extraordinary response and um, is only raises the stakes in these ongoing investigations by both Congress and the FBI. Because mostly there's been a fair amount of smoke but not really a lot of tangible evidence of collusion. So, right. and, and, and this doesn't necessarily advance the ball. Uh, you know, what, what were these contacts? What were these reports? How reliable were they? What were they based on? We don't know but the it's answer a, to but any it's of a, that. But it's an investigative trail that you certainly would be following. And so I guess the like, question for you is, um, uh, where does this, where do we go from here? I mean, what, what, what happens next? Uh, look, I, I, you heard multiple Democrats today saying that as a result of this testimony, it uh, ups the case uh, for an independent commission uh, to conduct this investigation. There have been uh, concerns about how uh, uh, thorough and comprehensive and aggressive. The congressional committees uh, uh, are being, uh, it, it is noteworthy Some of what today that this is on. a judiciary, uh, right? We had a, we had a long story uh, a couple weeks ago about the Senate Intelligence Committee and how slow they've been uh, uh, in, in, in digging into this. Um, it is noteworthy. This was a judiciary subcommittee. This was supposed to be all a uh, issue that the intelligence committees were going to be uh, investigating. They announced that both House and Senate announced their investigations back in January. Uh, and uh, yet it, it, it's Lindsey Graham uh, who gets uh, this very important new testimony into the public sphere. Um, I, you know, look, will there be a, an independent um, commission? Almost certainly not in with the way Congress is currently constituted, Republican control. You can you could see how much Republican pushback there was today from Grassley, from uh, Ted Cruz and others. Uh, So uh, uh, but at the end of the day, it's all it's always about the revelations. If there are more revelations, it'll ratchet up the pressure. Uh, and who knows uh, where that could lead, possibly an independent it, commission. And hey, I think it's fair to say the pressure did ratchet up today. 